This lecture is about the link analysis for web search. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the web search and particularly focusing on how to do link analysis and use the results to improve search. The main topic of uh, this lecture is to look at the, the ranking algorithms for web search. In the previous lecture, we talked about how to create index. Now that we have got the index, we want to see how we can improve ranking of pages on the web. Now, standard IR models can be also applied here. In fact, they are important building blocks for, improving, for uh, supporting web search, but they aren't sufficient, and mainly for the following reasons. First, on the web, we tend to have very different information needs. For example, people might uh, search for a web page or entry page, and this is different from the traditional uh, library search, where people are primarily interested in collecting literature information. So this kind of queries are often called navigational queries. The purpose is to navigate into a particular target page. So for such queries, we might benefit from using link information. Secondly, documents have additional information. And on the web, web pages are uh, well formatted. There are a lot of uh, other clues, such as the layout, the title, or link information again. So uh, this has uh, provided the opportunity to use extra context information of a document to improve scoring. And finally, information quality varies a lot. So that means we have to consider many factors to improve uh, the ranking algorithm. This would give us a more robust way to rank the pages, uh, making it harder for any spammer to just uh, manipulate one signal to improve the ranking of a page. So as a result, uh, people have made a, a number of major extensions to the ranking algorithms. Uh, one line is to exploit uh, links to uh, improve scoring. And that's the main topic of this lecture. Uh, People have also proposed algorithms to exploit the large-scale uh, implicit feedback information in the form of click-throughs, and that's of course in the category of feedback techniques, and machine learning is often used there. In general, in web search, the ranking algorithms are based on machine learning algorithms to uh, combine all kinds of uh, features. And many of them are based on the standard uh, virtual models such as BM25. Um, that we talked about or query likelihood uh, to score different parts of documents or to um, provide additional features based on content matching. But uh, link information is also very useful. So they provide uh, additional scoring uh, uh, signals. So let's look at links uh, in more detail on the web. So this is uh, a uh, snapshot of some uh, part of the web, let's say. So we can see there are many links uh, that link the different pages together. And in this case, you can also uh, look at the, the center here. There is a description of a link that's pointing to the document on the right side. Now, this description text is called anchor text. Now, if you think about the, uh, this text, it's actually quite uh, useful because it provides some extra description of that uh, page being pointed to. So for example, if someone wants to uh, bookmark uh, amazon.com front page, the person might say uh, the biggest online bookstore and then with a link to Amazon, right? So the description here actually is very similar to what a user would type in, uh, in the query box when they are looking for such a page. And that's why it's very useful for, for ranking pages. Suppose someone types in the query like uh, online bookstore or uh, biggest online bookstore, right? The query would match this anchor text in the page uh, here. And then this actually provides evidence for matching the page that's been pointed to. That is the Amazon uh, entry page. So if you match the anchor text, that describes a link to a page, actually that provides uh, good uh, evidence for the relevance of the page being pointed to. So anchor text is very useful. And if you look at the bottom part of this picture, you can also see there are some patterns of links, and these links 
might indicate the utility of a document. So for example, uh, on the right side, you can see this page has received many in, in links. Now that means many other pages are pointing to this page. And this shows that this page is quite useful. On the left side, you can see this is another page that points to many other pages. So this is a directory page that would allow you to actually see a lot of other pages. So we can call the first case authority page and the second case help page. Now this means the link information can help in two ways. One is to provide extra text for matching. And the other is uh, to provide some additional scores for uh, the web pages to characterize how likely a page is a help, how likely a page is an authority. So people then, of course, um, propose ideas uh, to leverage this, in, uh, this, this link information. Uh, Google's page rank, uh, which was the main technique that they uh, used in early days, uh, is a good example. And that, that, so that is an algorithm to capture page popularity, basically uh, to score authority. So the intuitions here are links are just like uh, uh, citations in the literature. Uh, think about one page pointing to another page. This is very similar to one paper citing another paper. So of course, then if a page is cited often, then we can assume this page to be more useful in general, right? Uh, so that's a very good intuition. Now, page rank is essentially uh, to take advantage of this uh, intuition to implement it uh, with a principled approach. Intuitively, it, it's essentially doing citation counting or in-link uh, counting. It just improves this simple idea uh, in, in two ways. One is it would consider indirect citations. So that means you don't just look at the, uh, how many in-links you have. You also look at the, uh, what are those pages that are pointing to you. If those pages themselves have a lot of in-links, well, that means a lot. In some sense, you will get some credit from that. Uh, but if those pages that are pointing to you are not uh, being pointed to by other pages, they themselves don't have many in-links, then, well, you don't get that much credit. So that's the idea of getting indirect citation. Right, so uh, you can also understand this idea by looking at, the, again, the research papers. If you're cited by, let's say, 10 papers, and those 10 papers are uh, just um, uh, workshop papers and that are, or some and papers that are not very influential, right? So although you get 10 in-links, and that's not as good as if you have you are cited by 10 papers that themselves have attracted a lot of other citations. Right? So this is uh, a case where we would like to consider indirect links, and PageRank does that. The other idea is it's going to smooth the citations. Or, or assume that basically every page is um, having a non-zero pseudo-citation count. Essentially, you're trying to imagine there are many virtual links that would link uh, all the pages together uh, so that you, you actually get uh, pseudo-citations from everyone. Now, the, the reason why they want to do that uh, is uh, this would allow them to solve the problem elegantly with uh, uh, linear algebra uh, technique. So uh, I think uh, maybe the best way to understand the page rank is to uh, think of this as to uh, compute uh, the probability of a random surfer uh, visiting every web page. Uh, 